Turned up to this one, customer said that it was leaking outside the wall. It's a Worcester Bosch 30 SI. When you go inside, the pressure's on two and a half bar. So it means it's the PRV that's dripping outside. The boiler's cold and the customer hasn't used it since last night. So the first thing I'm gonna check is the filling loop. It can't be the expansion vessel because the boiler hasn't been in use and the pressure's still high. So we're gonna pop the filling loop out. Looks pretty dry to me. So the next thing we need to be checking is to see where the mains pressure mixes with the heating pressure to make the pressure rise. So I'm gonna whip the case off. You probably can't hear it, so I'm gonna hold the phone really close. If you listen really carefully, you can hear the pressure passing. So now we've confirmed that it's the plate that's got a pinhole in it, because it's the only place that the cold main meets the central heating system. So here's a drawing I did quite a while ago to explain this fault. Just a quick sketch to show you how it can combine with a pinhole between the two. So let's get this condensed trap out of the way to give us a bit more room. Go put that to one side for later. We're gonna change that rubble O-ring as well. Carry the plate as van stock. So we're going to get the boiler drain down. Isolate the cold main in with a spanner, not with a screwdriver. Then we're going to isolate the return and the flow. You don't need to do this if the boiler is the highest point in the house, but it's not here. We're going to open a hot tap to take the pressure off. Then we're going to pop the diverter valve motor out the way. Then we're going to get Eddie on the drain off point to make it easier to open. If these haven't been used for a while, then they can be quite hard. So put Eddie on, put the hose on, and then it allows you to just literally open it with ease. Going to open the vent at the top to let the air in, which pushes the water out. So the new plate comes with all the washers that you need. The new plates are 14 plates, whereas the old one used to be 16, so there should be a little bit more room. If you watch my videos, you know I normally always take the pump out, but I had enough of the gas police telling me off and saying that you can move the pipe work, so let's give it a go. Gonna pop the hot pipe out of the clip, gonna undo the nut at the back, pull the nut away to give us room to pull that pipe out. I'm already not really a fan of this method. I had to take the clip off the wall as well because there wasn't enough room to push it back. And I couldn't quite get the pipe work out, so I have to undo the union on there with the screws that attach it to the jig as well to give me a little bit of room to get my hand up the back. So now I've created some room underneath for the plate to come out. I'm going to use a long handled PZ2 screwdriver and I'm going to undo the two screws on either side. There's going to be water that's sat in the plate that you can't get out, so just be aware. So once the screws are out, get your hand up the back. I don't do I told you so, but I do have a flexible bucket that's waterproof to catch all that water. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to stop it going up my sleeve. So once you get over the fact your sleeve's wetter than a penguin slipper, you just get on with it. Oh, still water in it. This, I just, I just don't like this method already. It looks so unprofessional. You like prizing pipe work out the way. You're trying to move stuff down and round. I much prefer just taking the pump out. After you've sat there and looked at it for a little minute, you can like readjust it and flip it up and it, and it will come out. I'm still a little annoyed about the wet sleeve, to be honest. So now I've got to get my hand up there to get the old washers out. And then I lube the new washers up and then I've got to set my hand back up the back and pop them into place. You can't see anything, so you're kind of going in a little bit blind, so you've kind of just got to feel your way around. The point of putting plenty of lube on is it kind of holds itself in place. So 
to get both sides done. Then we've got the new plate to go in. If you can't remember which way around the arrows point on the plate, just remember that I'm always right, so they point to the right. That's a joke, by the way, before people get really animated in the comments. I still stand by, I don't think this is a very good method of doing this. I'm sure you'll all let me know in the comments how you, how you do this. I'd be, um, I'd be over the moon to hear them. So once you've lined it up and none of the washers have fell out, get your PZ2 screwdriver again and tighten that up. And then you just work in reverse, put the hot back, put the clip on, tighten it all up. Now we're going to open all of the isolation valves again, starting with the flow, then the cold, then the return. Or flow, return, cold, whatever. I usually leave the hot tap open when I open it originally, just to get a bit of air out, and then I go and close the tap off, put the diverter valve motor back in, leave the filling loop key in, pop that in. Start pressurising the system again. I'm going to turn the power back on. Green light means go. That's another one done. Happy days.